And the Bible tells us that the tribulation that will come upon the whole earth at the end of this age will catch the world by surprise. That will, it will leave people perplexed. And it tells us, I'll just turn there, you don't have to turn there. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. There will be false prophets in the last days saying peace and safety. Everything's fine. Everything's peaceful. You're safe. You're secure. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to go wrong. And then when the tribulation comes. People are caught by it and they're perplexed, they're confused. Now, the church will be taken to heaven before the tribulation begins. So we don't have to worry about that. Look what he says. This is what it's like in the society, in this nation, right before it collapses. Do not trust in a friend. Do not put your confidence in a companion. Guard the doors of your mouth from her who lies in your bosom. For son dishonors father. Daughter rises against her mother. Daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own household. During, during the final days of the nation of Israel, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, there was great distrust and great division among the people. There was even division in families. People had to guard what they said around others, even around your own family members. You know, Jesus quoted Micah chapter 7, verse 6. In Matthew chapter 10, uh, verses 34 to 36, and Jesus said that families will divide over him. And some of you I know have experienced that. We're, we're told in Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, that God will send Elijah the prophet to return to the earth during the tribulation period. And one of the main reasons Elijah will come will be to restore families, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. To restore families back together because there's going to be this, dis this division, this distrust among people, even families. Now look at verse 7. Verse 7, therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Now, now we can see many similarities between what was happening in Israel and what's happening in our own nation and our own culture. And, and, and so what should we do? We should look to the Lord. Just like Micah. Micah realized that God was the only hope for their nation at that point. And God is the only hope for our nation. Our problems are not going to be fixed by the next election cycle or the election cycle after that, or if this group wins the House, or this group wins Congress, or this group wins White House. Like, that is not where our hope lies. You know, and I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, how you should vote, or you should vote, you absolutely should vote, vote, vote biblically, you know, vote for the candidate and the party that most aligns with the Bible. But our hope is, is not in that. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. And, and so, just like Micah here, we should look to the Lord. We should wait for the God of our salvation, either to send revival or to take us home in the rapture to be with him. Either one of those are fine with me. But what if he doesn't send revival? What if we're not raptured? What if we are watching just the, the, the end of our nation? Look to the Lord. Especially look to the Lord. If that's what's happening. So verse 8. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Notice how Micah includes himself in with the nation here. Until he pleads my case and executes justice for me, he will bring me forth to the light. To the light. I will see his righteousness. 
Then she who is my enemy will see and shame will cover her who said to me, where is the Lord your God? My eyes will see her. Now she will be trampled down like mud in the streets. In the day when your walls are to be built in that day, the decree shall go far and wide in that day. They shall come to you from Assyria and the fortified cities, from the fortress to the river, from sea to sea and mountain to mountain. Yet the land shall be desolate because of those who dwell in it and for the fruit of their deeds. Here, here Micah, he, he knows that the nation will go into captivity in Babylon. But Micah also knows that God promises that he will restore the nation one day. And that he will bring Israel back and that Jerusalem will be rebuilt. And as we've mentioned before, this is one of those prophecies that has a a near fulfillment and a far fulfillment. There's the near fulfillment in that Jerusalem was rebuilt after the captivity. They were brought back in the days of Nehemiah. But there's also this future fulfillment in the kingdom age when God will bring back his people from the four corners of the earth to Israel and reestablish Israel and Jerusalem. Jerusalem. 